hey guys welcome back to my channel today again i have my assistant and yeah today i'm going to be telling you guys about her skincare routine and also her hair care routine yes how i managed to keep her hair looking like this just on turn and see your hair you guys can see she's just four months and there's no space in her hair no bald spots you know her hair is just very thick and full and you know luscious and delicious okay and then her skin you guys always compliment her skin as well you can see how her skin is glowing okay so the first thing i'll say is that genetics has some role to play in how your kids you know hair and skin look okay genetics has some role to play but at the same time i'll tell people that if you had seen my daughter my first daughter um if you guys don't know i have three you know daughters and the first two are in school right now they are grown five years and three years and this is my baby and yeah for my first daughter if you had seen her hair at this age you will know that genetics eh, <laughs> genetics has a role to play but not so much okay because she had a lot of bald spots you know her hair was sometimes dry i didn't really know how to take care of the hair so everything i'll be sharing in this video is what i have learned over time taking care of three girls okay so yeah that's that about the genetics part genetics has a role to play but not so much not as much as people you know sometimes think or or not as much as people attribute to genetics okay yeah so the first real game changer which i realized i think when my first daughter was about eight months or so she had already experienced a lot of hair loss and that was when i realized that one of the major contributing factors to hair loss is the fabric that you know children sleep on um normal bed sheets normal cotton bed sheets normal car seat fabric normal chair fabrics all those things actually contribute to hair loss because they rub their hair on those things and those things are you know they cause a lot of friction on kids hair so i realized it when my daughter was eight months and from then on i started using satin okay so this is a satin sheet um i made this one myself actually my mom made it for me um i have two of these sheets for my first daughter i used a different one anyway but it was actually satin i went to market and just regular market and i bought you know satin sheets so i put satin on her bed and put it in her car seat so from when i started using it for her at eight months all the bald spots covered up her hair grew properly and since then till today she has had very you know good hair growth and all that okay so for my second child Ava and for this baby from the first day from the first day we come back from the hospital I always bring out my satin sheet um yeah this is actually a very big one it's actually uh, one side is cotton then this side has satin so it's a very you know large sheet but I usually fold it uh, into four I fold it into four when they are born then when they grow bigger I fold it into two and then when they are now you know like one year I now keep it you know um, the full length okay um yeah so satin sheets is a big game changer <laughs> if you can use certain sheets for your babies right from when they are born i promise you you're not going to experience hair loss even if they experience hair loss it won't be that bad because even for my daughter i noticed that she still has a little bit of hair loss it's not like it's not enough to cause you know any space in her hair but the hair at her back you know that it's not as thick as the hair in other places and that's because even if yeah i use certain sheets there's still a lot of friction on that part okay whether on um you know the sheet itself on her car seats on people's bodies you know yeah there's always that friction so the back of her hair is not as thick as the rest of her hair but it's actually pretty thick because she has very very thick hair so even the part that i'm telling you is not that thick like if you see it in real life you'll be wondering what i'm talking about but me i know because she's my daughter okay so imagine if i wasn't using satin sheets for her she might have experienced hair loss or you know bald spots okay yes so the second thing that i learned and i've been doing it for my baby as well is that i do not wash their hair every day okay yes normal nigerian you know uh, uh, style of bathing children you guys know that we bath children every day sometimes we bath children twice a day some people do that anyway but me i don't so when people bath their children twice a day like in the morning and in the night and each time they bath their children they wash their children's hair with either the you know bathing soap or you know shampoo or whatever black soap so when people wash their kids hair 
every single time that they bath their kids and that is a big no-no because you are going to dry out your kids hair a lot dry it out so much and then combing the hair that often as well can lead to hair loss okay but for my baby i wash her hair once every week and that's because um yeah she has a lot of spit ups and breast milk and stuff like that that goes to her hair when she's sleeping so what i do during the week is that i always rinse her hair with just plain water like when i'm bathing her i take plain water and just rinse her hair properly and you know call it a day okay but on sundays that's when i actually wash her hair every sunday so on sundays i go ahead to use a shampoo i wash her hair and yeah so for the shampoo that i use i use this um it's called cn kids okay yeah so this is what i use to wash her hair every sunday but you can actually contact different um there's some nigerian brands that actually have shampoos that are formulated for babies and those are you know homemade homemade -ish, you know products that are also good and gentle for african babies hair um yeah i know this product is an oibo product let me see produced in the uk yeah it's an oibo product which is not you know so good for our hair but at the same time when my kids are babies i try to limit my use of you know homemade or all those kind of mixture products you know on them because they are babies i don't want any issues this one says tear free and that's why, that's why i even used it actually says it's a tear free product so even if it gets into her eyes it's not going to pepper her eyes you know okay so that's it for washing her hair and then for bathing her i use this chico bath um bath liquid okay um that's what it looks like so this chico bath foam is what i use for my kids right from birth and i love it so much it lasts a lot i use just one pump I use a, a, a foam sponge to bath my baby. So I use just one pump, sometimes two pumps, and it washes them perfectly, okay? So it lasts a lot. Since she was born, I've been using this one, and it is just halfway. I don't even know if it's up to halfway, self. Let me see. It's somewhere here. Uh, yeah, so since she was born, it's, it's still somewhere here. That is uh, four months after, okay? So I can use this thing for another four months before it will finish. So... I highly recommend this. I visit for my three kids. It was perfect on their skin. But if your children have skin issues, it might not work for them, okay? This is what works for me. So after bathing my baby, because my baby actually has dry skin, it's not so bad, but her skin is drier than I'm used to, okay? Yeah, so she actually has dry skin. So after bathing my baby, I don't dry her body so much. I just use her towel to dab her a bit and, you know, just remove the excess water and then I remove the towel. I don't dry her very well with the towel because she has dry skin um yeah so sometimes i even use a wet towel to just you know remove the excess i use a, a i use not, let me not say wet i use a damp towel to remove the excess water from her body so her body is still left you know a little bit wet but not dripping wet okay so yeah i do that because she has dry skin but even if your child doesn't have dry skin you have to be gentle with them when you are you know you know cleaning their body you don't rub them as if you are rubbing a grown adult <laughs> okay except for her bum anyway i dry her bum very well because i go in immediately with this diaper um, cream this is it is the a and d i love this product so much a little goes a long way when i say little, i mean a little goes a long way if you take this product the way people take maybe vaseline or normal body cream it's going to be too much okay very very little goes a long way i don't even know why they, they make it in this big jar because this thing can last for at least one year or even two years self you know so um yeah I even had to share it with someone and look at how much it is like i literally took almost half of this and gave my friend still it is still a lot like a little goes a long way so that's 6k when you want to pay for it initially it's like can i pay 6k for bonbon -bon cream okay but trust me it, it was too much like it's too much <laughs> and it works really well i love it i love using it on her i love the smell yeah i use it every single day and she doesn't ever have diaper rash like at all she never has diaper rash the only thing she has had one time was when um, she was pooing a lot and we just kept wiping and wiping and then she started having irritation around her bum area so i used pseudo cream just in her bum area then i used this one all over her bum and her sides wherever diaper touches i used this one then i used um pseudo cream for just the area where she had you know 
uh, it's not rash, I'll call it like irritation. Okay, so for body cream, when my kids are born, I usually just use the Chico body lotion, okay? I don't know if I have it here, I would have shown you guys. I use the Chico body lotion. It looks like this actually, the same kind of bottle, it comes with a pump and all that. So I use it for them right from when they are born because they are babies. I like using, like I said, I, I limit my use of homemade concussions for my kids, you know, when they are born because I just want to be sure that they're using products that are formulated for babies, okay? Yeah, so when they are born, I usually just go with that normal Chico and I also go with olive oil. So that is plain olive oil, no mix, nothing inside. So I use the Chico lotion first and I use the olive oil after but if the weather is hot or if you know the baby is sweating i use just the chico lotion or if i notice that my baby's skin is looking dry i use both okay but yeah after she turned three months i now decided to use this body butter it is from blissy coconut okay yeah that's it it's from blissy coconut i love it so much the person that makes this is based here in port Harcourt, so i'll put maybe her number or a link to her um, Instagram handle in the description box so that you can buy from her if you want. So the ingredients are raw shea butter, cocoa butter, argan oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, castor oil, chamomile and a blend of essential oils. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. It is whipped, okay? Um, um, just take a look. So I've just taken small. And this is it at the back of my hand. I don't know if I can, I don't know if you guys will see what I'm trying to show you. Yeah, so this is it at the back of my hand. It is very, very moisturizing. When I say moisturizing, I mean very, very. Okay, so um, this is what I use for her right now. And that is why I don't dry her body so much so that I can use this on top and it will lock in all that moisture okay another thing i use on her face because she has dry skin on her face is breast milk yes <laughs> don't say i say you should go and use breast milk oh. but sometimes when i'm breastfeeding her and i can see that her forehead is dry uh, she usually has dry patches around here um, yes, I take a bit of breast milk and I rub it all over her face and it goes by the next morning it's, I don't see it anymore, okay? So whether it's worked or not, though, I don't know, but I use breast milk on her face <laughs> when I notice that she has dry skin on her face. It's not that often, okay? So I don't use it every day, but whenever I notice it, even if I've had a bath or whatever, I still carry breast milk and rub all over her face and trust me, before morning I don't see it, so it must be working, okay? Anyway, don't say it's me. I told you to go and do it though, but yeah, I think it works. <laughs> so after bathing her, while her hair is still wet, I go in and use this also on her hair. This um, um, body and hair butter. I use it on her hair. I don't dry her hair. In fact, I hardly dab her hair self. Like, I want that moisture to remain on her hair because many children experience hair loss because their hair is dry so i don't want the water to you know evaporate and then when i want to comb her hair you guys it's not been easy i comb her hair once a week because it is not easy combing her hair sometimes i do twice a week sometimes i do three times a week if i notice that her hair is looking too tangled i might do twice or three times a week other times i just use my hand to finger to tangle her hair because it's it's not easy combing her hair her hair is very very full like there's no space like and her hair is very tightly curled okay so when you put the comb you can't just put comb and drag comb out you have to put comb drag it out small bring out the comb hold the hair then do the tips like it's a lot i do the tips then go back again put the comb inside drag it up hold the tips and do the tips again so it takes a lot to comb her hair and most times she cries even with all these things i do she cries she just reminds me of somebody cora i won't mention her name but it's cora <laughs> So this is the Cantu Care for Kids Conditioning Detangler. It softens strands for easy comb coils. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, I stand by this product. I love it so much. Some people don't like Cantu. They say Cantu this, Cantu that. Uh, but this product in particular actually works really well for my children. Uh, from the first bond to the last bond, it works really, really well. Like it just softens the hair quickly, like sharp, sharp. It doesn't, it's not the type that I've had some detanglers that you have to spray and spray and spray. Still, it's not that soft. You know, this one has a lot of slip. It's very, very soft and it works really well. 
So that's what I use to detangle her hair. I don't wash it off. I just use it after I've rubbed the body butter. I apply it and I comb her hair whenever I want to comb her hair. So yeah, that's basically what I do for my, you know, baby's hair and skin. I try to change her clothes often. Like I don't allow her to wear dirty clothes. I don't allow her to wear diaper for too long. And also when my kids are still babies, I try to go for the foreign diapers, either the foreign hoggies or the foreign pampas. Because there's a difference, okay? There's a difference. Yes, it is more expensive, but there is a difference. And I also change them very often. Sometimes I even think I change them too often, but I don't allow my baby to sit in her pee or sit in her pool because those things actually cause diaper rash, could cause discomfort. The child will just be cranky and be crying. You will not know why. So, my dear, yes, it's expensive, but it's diaper. It's just diaper, okay? So, I always change them very often. And that's why the skin on their bum is always, is always their bum, okay? <laughs> The skin on their bum is always very soft and supple and smooth, no spots, no irritation, no nothing, okay? And then for wipes, I always use fragrance-free wipes for my babies. Um, I've always used Huggies, the natural care fragrance-free wipes, okay? But recently, I discovered Kirkland fragrance-free wipes as well, so I use both, like... And if I go to market, anyone I see, I buy. I love using fragrance free because sometimes products that have fragrance actually cause irritation, especially for babies. And if your baby has sensitive skin, that might be the reason why your baby is always having diaper rash. And you will not know, okay? It might be the wipes. So, yeah. Then also, I try to wash her bum whenever she has a big blowout because the wiping and wiping and wiping can cause irritation. So, I just carry her like this straight to the bath and just wash the, bum, the pool and everything away and wash her bum and then, you know, proceed to put the diaper rash cream and all that okay what else again okay so i use um Persil to wash her clothes even though yeah when i think about that thing i'm just like i use Persil to wash her clothes i use normal detergent to wash my own clothes and i still carry her on my body so am i really doing anything special <laughs> so it's either all of us who use the Persil or all of us who use the area but because they are still small because i like you know the smell of Persil, i use Persil for all her clothes but yeah, it doesn't matter the talents you use. I, I mean, to me, I don't think it really matters that much. What matters is that you don't keep your children in dirty clothes. Try and wipe their bodies, you know, their um, bodies often. Like when they have under their neck hair, sometimes breast milk goes there or food goes there. Yeah, so sometimes I try to wipe their necks. I don't cover my babies too much because the weather is very hot. So if your baby is always having rashes, maybe you're covering your baby too much. Also, be mindful of this part. If you have a chubby baby, like my baby is quite chubby, I always put her in just onesies because if you're not careful, uh, all those folds in their body, you know, even her hands, she has some folds. If you're not careful, those folds are going to start you know, getting irritated because of heat. So I try to keep her in minimal clothes during the day. At night, I wear her overalls, but we sleep with AC, okay? So, yeah, I also do not use powder for my kids. I don't see the use. I bought powder when I had Cora, my first child, okay? So I bought powder. You know, when you're just buying things now, ah, I need to have everything. So I bought powder, but I never used it. I didn't see the use. Like, for her bum bum, I used diaper rash cream, okay, for her body. When she sweats, I, I clean off the sweat because why I don't like even using powder for them when they are sweaty is that yes, temporarily it might keep them dry and fresh, but then when they sweat, the powder now, you know, forms particles and now it looks one kind. So for me, I don't see the use for powder. Um, some people use um, powder in their baby's diapers. Um, yeah, but for me, for girls, I think you should be careful with that. If you have a girl, I don't think you should use, you know, um, powder in her diaper because you know it enters her bum bum yeah so you minimize issues in the future for your picking <laughs> i'm not saying it's definitely going to cause issues for your child but i'm just saying uh, just in case she minimize issues for your child so don't put um, powder in their diaper um just put it on their body if you're someone that likes using um, you know powder it's better for you to use you know diaper rash cream for their bum bum so yeah, I think that is it. Let me know in the comment section if you learned anything new from this video and if there's anything you want to incorporate or what you do for your kids that works that you think, you know, other kids or my kids can benefit from. Please leave it in the comment section. I'd love to read your comments. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.